Mark Ray Mundy for ESPN joined today by Dakota Dicheva, one of PFL's rising stars. And, and Dakota, it's 2024 now. Uh, we're just a few days into 2024, yeah. but you really had an incredible 2023, right? 3-0, and three finishes. You won 100K US, I believe, uh, last month. Another finish. Uh, I mean, can you just reflect a little bit on what on what that year was for you? And you you kind of, you know, took over PFL's European scene. Yeah, it was a crazy year, to be honest, a year that I feel like I worked so, so hard for like my whole career. And I finally had a little bit of a breakthrough. Um, Obviously, I won the whole tournament, but I think just um, my name in general, just kind of a lot of people knew about me more this year. You know, I got a lot more attention than I usually do. And I feel like a little bit more respect as well. Um, And yeah, just kind of winning that belt kind of cemented a little bit like, you know, she's She's kind of a big thing in Europe now, and hopefully I'll be able to go onto the world scene and uh, and do the same this year. I really feel like, you know, what you did in PFL Europe last year was kind of an example of what PFL is looking for as far as, you know, their different regions, right? You know, they have different yeah. regions uh, around the world, and they're building new ones, you know, as we speak. And they're hoping that the champions there then kind of can, can graduate almost to – you know, the U.S. based or I mean, it's really world based, honestly, the, the the PFL tournament structure, like the main the main scene. Do you feel the same way like that? You almost kind of set an example of what this could be for PFL. Yeah, definitely. Um, I've always I've really enjoyed being part of PFL Europe as well. Obviously, it was only the first year that it was running, but I feel like um, it went really, really well. They did an, an amazing job. I think it's the area that they kind of the in between stage from like the lower shows to the big big global scene I think it's that nice little gap in the middle that you know we're missing a little bit and um like you said you know this this tournament now has kind of prepared prepared me for the for the next stage of going maybe to the world global one and um I think it's a, been a really important it was a really important year for me you know just to gradually build up kind of get the feel for what you know the big the big shows are about and how it all works and being able to fight for big crowds and you know just prepare for the for the next stage and I've um it was it was just amazing a really good year yeah being a part of it and it's that next stage of that that I want to ask you about now I mean so mm -hmm. you had that great year and I really feel like you've been earmarked as one of PFL's stars in the future you're 25 you're undefeated you know you're you, you're a finisher right you know you've had you've had a bunch of uh, highlight reel finishes over the last few years yeah. so what what is 2024 looking like and I preface that question with the fact that PFL has not had a women's flyweight division yet yeah. for their season. Have they told you about starting one? And also, there's the Bell the Bellator element as well. So, so what does 2024 look like for Dakota Digiva? Do you know what? I can't actually answer that right now because I don't know. I'm on to my manager every day. I'm like saying to him, "Has PFL told you the plans for this year?" Because originally, when I signed, it was to do the Europe tournament and then win that. Obviously, I needed to win it and then go on to the next one. Um. But now, obviously, it's going to be the first year of a one-two-five division. I don't know with now, like the signings with Ingarnu, um, you know, like all the big names that they've got, and then obviously the Bellator signing. I don't know what actually is happening now. Whether there is a, still a plan to do a one-two-five division for the global tournament, or whether they're just going to do straight fights with us. Um, like you said, they they take me quite serious. They build my name up quite well, so I'm sure like. If we don't do a tournament, they'll want to put me on a great card or something. And with the Bellator signing as well, that opens a whole kind of like one, two, five women, you know. So mm -hmm. there's just so many different options. And I've kind of been like the last two weeks, just like my mind's, come on, give me something. Like, tell me what your ideas are, you know, because I don't know what PFL's plans are, not just with me, but in general with everybody else. So, um. I mean, that's all I can say right now is that I'm open to so many ideas and just want to fight, you know. So as long as they give me three, hopefully maybe four this time, four fights this year, then um, I'll be happy. I'll be happy to go with the flow. I feel like you're someone who could benefit the most from Bellator and their fighters coming over mm -hmm. to PFL. And uh, the reason why yeah. I say that is because PFL has not had a women's 125 division, but Bellator does. And they have some really quality fighters that at flyweight, Liz Carmouche, you know, Ali Malay McFarlane, yeah. Juliana Velasquez, uh, you know, they're a kind of Watanabe. Like there's a, there's a pretty decent division there that, you know, you can come right into and there's kind of exciting fights for you right away. If that yeah. is the way, the way that PFL chooses to go and merges everything together. 
Yeah, hundred percent. I mean, definitely with the the female division that they've got for one two five, it couldn't have put me in a better position, you know. So it's worked out really well for me. Um, like I said, whether they do a tournament or they just give me some, you know, good opponents from um from the Bellator side, then I'm I'm happy. But I just think this the 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 path that I've taken with PFL has just worked out perfect. And um, obviously, I had a really good year last year now with this signing and plenty of other opportunities I feel like it's just going to go the same way and I just need to make sure I'm in the gym training getting better and then I'll be ready for whatever they want to give me yeah the other name that I was trying to uh, that I was trying to remember was Denise Keelholz that would be a banger fight you and yeah. Denise Keelholz another European kickboxer Muay Thai fighter I mean that's that's a banger it would be an absolutely amazing fight but I love her to pieces I've watched I've watched so many fights I always post it when she fights I support or comment on a thing she she can't on my Instagram so it would be a shame to have to fight her because I've watched her for years even in kickboxing so um she's someone that I've always looked up to and just kind of you know always thought wow what a, an amazing female fighter she is so it would be a bit of a shame but like you said the two striking styles would would really give a good fight, I think. Plus, our heights are completely different. Like, I'm really tall. She's really short. She's got big hands. I like to kick. So, mm -hmm. it, it would probably be quite interesting, but it'd be a shame because I do really enjoy watching her fight. Do you, uh, are you, are you set at, at flyweight at 125 or could you move up or down? Yeah, no, I'm set. I think 125 is the, definitely the the division for me. Um, I make that easy, you know. I only have a small court. I don't walk around really heavy. So um, 135, would, the girls would just be too big. They'd be cutting from too high, you know. For me, I'd, I'd be at a disadvantage straight away. And I'm not looking to be any skinnier on weighing day to hit one, 115. That is just not something that I'd like to do. Plus, I like my food too much, so I'm, I'm happy at 125. <laughs> We won't be seeing you against uh, Chris Cyborg or, or Kayla Harrison at any point, I guess. No, I definitely, I mean, Kayla, she is in some shape. I train at the same gym as Kayla in America, so she is absolutely ripped. She's definitely too too big for me. I wouldn't be able to be able to get to that size, but um, but yeah, one, two, five will do. <laughs> I think her, her head's a little bit too big too, Kayla Harrison. You can tell her, <laughs> that's on the record, you can tell her I said that. Um, Are you sure actually, you want me to tell her? <laughs> <laughs> well tell her if i'm not around tell her if i'm like on the other side of the country how's that is that okay, fair Okay, that's a safe yeah. safe idea <laughs> <laughs> i actually didn't want to ask you about american top team because that's kind of like your your home away from home in the united states and they have a killer group of women down there kayla harrison being one of them and maybe killer yeah. for real if she hears what i said about her a few minutes ago but uh but tell me about about that and how much that has helped you um your training there with you know all, all those uh fantastic uh, female fighters yeah, it's been amazing. I think, like you said, just the female bodies that I get to train with there has um has really upped my game. I think um with me being here in the UK, I don't have very very many females to train with, if any, completely. Um, so it's definitely been that's been the main thing that's been you know a real standout to me. The work that I've been able to get in with a lot of high level, um, you know, grapplers, strikers has been amazing. But as well, like I travel a lot in the UK to different gyms to get different work in. Um, I live at home with my parents and my two brothers. So that can be a little bit crazy sometimes when you're in camp and just want to, you know, concentrate on what you're doing. It's, it's always difficult. So even that aspect of being over there on my own, living on my own, you know, not having all my family eating takeaway in the same room while I'm trying to diet. <laughs> Just little things like that that you don't think about just make things so much easier. So obviously waking up in the sun as well to Florida is <laughs> is always nice. So yeah, just a win-win all around, I think. Everyone who comes out of ATT is always really well-rounded. Like no matter what their base yeah. is when they come into ATT, they end up being really good at everything. Are you working on kind of the wrestling and grappling aspects specifically there? Yeah, I mean, I'm working everything. I think that's the good thing about American Top Team. They have they have it worked out. They have a balance of everything right. You know, our fighters' timetable is split between it all. Our extra classes, there's classes for striking, jujitsu, uh, wrestling. There's there's all bases are all covered. You know, so I think that's the one thing they have really worked out. There is the right amount of each, and I think that's why we have such a good rounded, well rounded set of athletes there. You know, we're all kind of working on the right things together. I know that you, uh, one of the people that you looked up to when you were younger and probably even now is you want to get on and she trained yeah. the American top team. Have you got a chance to work with her at all? I know that she's been retired, but has she been down there? 
She actually came in, yeah. I, I, I did a fangirl moment and asked her for a photo on the mat. <laughs> I'm not going to lie, but yeah, she did come in. She did a little bit of training while she was passing through on holiday, but um, I didn't get to work with her like specifically, but um, yeah, she was there on the mat. And she was, she's an absolutely lovely girl as well. She's uh, she's super talented. I've watched her like for years and years. So stuff like that is really surreal to me, you know, to be in a gym with people that I've been watching for so long, just like, it's crazy to me. I feel so lucky to be able to be on the same mat. And it just makes me feel a little bit confident about my future, you know, to be surrounded by athletes like that. that just know that I'm heading in the right direction for sure. What was that fangirl moment like? I mean, I put the photo straight up on Instagram and it was just like, oh, my God. Even now when I think about the photo, it gets me excited. <laughs> but, yeah, I mean, I watched her for so many years. I think everyone was just excited back home for me when they saw the photo because they knew that I'd watched her for so long. So, yeah, it was it was one that I'll always remember. <laughs> Last thing I wanted to ask you, and, and Dakota, thank you so much for taking the time out. Uh, you you come from a, a martial arts family. You know, your mom, Lisa Howard, was really a legend in, in kickboxing, and I'm sure that she's passed a lot of that down to you. What is that like growing up with, uh, you know, a, a mom and a, and a woman who was such a, you know, badass in, in fight sports? Yeah, it's been a crazy journey. I think one that I always count myself lucky to have because not many girls do have that, you know, um, especially in the support in the sport as well. You know, you, it's normally the, the dads that are like they've been to, you know, uh, used to be a wrestler or used to be a fighter or something. But mine's my mum, so it stands out to a lot of people. But it's just I think the main thing I love about it is that her experience saves me a lot of mistakes. Um, and that's one thing that we'll always say, like she's always onto everything that I'm doing inside and outside of the sport just because she's been through it all before and then obviously emotions and things like that she's the one person that knows kind of how I'm feeling and what I'm feeling at what point you know she could probably tell me how I'm feeling without me even telling her so I think that's the one lucky thing that I get I get from from this but I mean it's always been super cool at school as well you can't forget that like no one messes with you <laughs> everyone's always dead nice I always used to say that um I could walk to the shop with my mum and if I was to bump into somebody that I knew they'd always say hi to my mum first before me it was just always like that but I've loved it I've always loved to show her off for sure so none of the guys in school mess with you because your mom would beat them up no no one <laughs> even the girls no girls mess with me either. <laughs> <laughs> don't want to get mom mad <laughs> she'll she'll no. kick you <laughs> yeah literally <laughs> what, are, what are those uh family dinners like you know you guys are just eating dinner and she's like make sure you you know you check the kick and <laughs> we well we always made sure we ate our veg as well off our plate so <laughs> we never left anything behind otherwise yeah we'd uh we'd be in trouble but no it was it's always been i've absolutely loved you know this this unique journey i would say that i've had with my mom for sure and um it's not over yet. We've still got a lot more to go. Awesome. Dakota, thank you so much. Looking forward to seeing what you do in 2024. It should be really a big year for you and for PFL as a whole. Thanks so much. Yeah. Thank you so much.